you're, you're racist. You're, you're, you're racist, racist endeavors, endeavors over here. Right? Yeah. I've, I've, come, had a so race. I've come here today to put an end to this racism. Okay, that's why I stopped in here. Hey, what a, I heard a rumor. What about me? What did you? Say? You're a racist. So is John. So is Kaizo. I'm, I'm a racist. Yeah, everybody in here except for me is a racist. Well, We're thank you, thank you. You're a racist too. No, I'm not. I'm the only one who's not. I'm because I'm transracial. Oh. But, and Sorry, I was just trying to be transracial. Kaizo is actually not a racist. He's a Jewist. He's, he's anti-Semitic. I'm, I'm, I'm racially fluid. Okay. I am, but I'm also I'm also I religiously was, fluid. I didn't know you were an anti-Semite. I'm not. Well, you can't. The, the what the, even the word anti-Semite is false because I mean, most so-called anti-Semites are in the Middle East. Many Middle Eastern people are supposed to be Semitic. So it's like, oh yeah, I'm anti semite I know, isn't it so Jewy to like take the word Semite and think it only applies to you? <laughs> it's just so Jewy. <laughs> it's, <pretty laughs> it's like it's like yeah, we're just gonna commandeer word. commandeer the word Semite <laughs> and make it only apply to Jews, even though it's not true. Well that's why I have my <laughs> spacing my <laughs> terms. I'm Wait, human just, just so I get and this straight. Is not my race is anti human. Yeah, it's pretty much like that, yeah. So just so I fully understand the the complexity of this, Spacey is like a quarter Jewish, right? Spacey is well. It, I'm Armenian. I'm Armenian, which is close enough for most people. <laughs> close enough. He's the most, you're he's Jewish, the most Jewish of the Muslims. He's the most Jewish of all the Muslims. They're not Muslim in any way. Uh, okay, you're the most Jewish of really. all the Coptic Christians. That's what a Jew would say. Yeah, that is what a Jew would say. See. <laughs> No, but Ar <laughs> Armenians, like, cult in, in America, a lot of the Armenian stereotypes are, are, they're pretty, they're pretty close. They're like a mixture of Italian and Jewish My friend, my friend, my friend, my friend, my friend, listen, listen, my friend. You want to yeah, buy I'm this Jewish -ish. thing. You want to buy this, my friend. Jewish You're my friend and you want to buy this. That's Armenians. Like, a lot of people have asked me if I was Jewish because apparently I look Jewish or I sound Jewish or something, so... Have you got like a lot, you don't you don't have good money, so yeah, I might it might be the nose a little bit. I have an Armenianish. I mean, it's more of an Italian nose, thank God. But there's probably still some Armenian. Hey, in thank that God. Nose. You don't want a Jewish? What? Wow, this is so bad, Spacey. First you're anti-blacks, now you're anti-Jews. Next you'll be anti-apples. There aren't even Armenians left. There's no more Armenia. It's been taken over by Turkey. Wait a Maybe second, guys. You you're not anti-apples. Oh wow, you guys are bad. But you're anti-Jew and you like girls, but you but you but you also like apples. Like, I have to go. Maybe I should just go undercover as a Jew. You should. You get all kind. Of, you can get all the perks they get. Apparently, they get to control the media. So, if you go to wow. any media corporation, say, "Hey, no, they, they would control the economy too." No, they would DNA. They'd DNA test me before I got the perks. They'd find the truth. Oh. You just You'd be disqualified on your nose alone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the nose, nose, John. You could tell them about your Sephardic Jews or something. Yeah, we don't have much genetic test for them. Go to a genetic plastic surgeon and ask to be turned into a Jew. Mm, special K. I'm going to a plastic surgeon and just going, make me a Jew. No, a genetic plastic surgeon. A plastic surgery is for your genes. That way you can become black. Or, they make pla yeah, but genetic plastic they make, surgery. You're saying they, they make plastic DNA? No, I'm saying they'll alter your DNA to make you a different race or religion. You can become Muslim if you want. My DNA is constantly mutating. That's why I'm transracial and transreligial. It's because of the superpowers I got when I mastered Satori and Awakening. I think you mean transreligible. I'm transgenerational. I'm transgenerational. Original. Generation genital. So, do you identify as a five year old boy? Sometimes. Why? Do you want to fuck me now? <laughs> I'd fuck me. <laughs> no, that would make me a something bad. I can't repeat. Oh, okay. I, I, mist I mistook anti semite for pedophile. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is so bad. This discussion, like, the, the number of nuances here is funny. Like, the, the, it, my my any is being tickled very 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 specially right now. I brought my actually, post Eric. Yes, the rabbis don't 
um, like do that whole sucking boys' penis after circumcising them anymore. So. I mean, I do still. I mean, when I well, circumcise it helps people, the wound. when I circumcise people, I use the old method. It's the only way to do it, really. You're supposed to chew up this. You're supposed <laughs> to chew the, the foreskin and spit it into the mouth of every family member that passes around like that. That's how you're supposed to do it. If oh wow. Uh, Oh but a lot of people God. abandon the old ways because they're not—they're not real believers like me. They say, "Eric, Guys, no, Eric we've never heard of that before." I th- they say, "We've never heard of that before." I said, "I've been doing it my whole life." You know. Hey guys, this is Ho- this is host Kaiser, and I remove myself from this chat, and I do not believe in anything that is being discussed in this chat. Okay. And I hope that misunderstand. Any, any police who might be be uh, be listening right now should should definitely suspect Kaizo of pedophilia. I'm definitely not a actual <laughs> circumcised. I've never actually he circumcised ran. anybody. I just chew those foreskins for fun. Oh, we scared off Kaizo. He's worried about getting arrested by the English police or something. <laughs> the Brits like to punish you for speaking. <laughs> okay, yeah, so, in any case, uh, oh, yeah. Kaizo is the new guest, any police who might be thinking of arresting him. That's not Kaizo, that's his identical twin brother, Kazo. Kazo is like Kaizo, Special except K. Kazo has, has anti-Semitic and racist feelings about things. Otherwise, he's exactly the it. same as Kaizo. Kaizo and his brother have been the subject of an extensive study on twins and how two identical twins can come out one racist and one not. It turns out it's not genetic. It may be linked to whether or not you chew the foreskin and spit it in another family member's mouth. I've I've claimed that for years. I've claimed it for years. Don't don't swallow the foreskin or else you grow racism. Yeah. You guys chased away uh, Daco. Who? No, 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 we didn't. <laughs> that was Audra. Oh. I might be seeing Mark this weekend. He might come out here to Los Angeles. I'd like to. Oh, nice. I'd like to meet his wife. That'd be cool. Oh, he's he's married he's now. Married. Yeah, married. he's got a married. new wife. Actually, married, married. Yeah, married, married. Like legally married. Yeah. No, the no the Jew marriage. And that's how they get married too, by the way. They just Jeez, chew, guys, they just why do you always got to be so racist? Oh wow! It's outside my jurisdiction, so I won't engage. There it is, right there. Don't we have any Jews around here? Oral, oral suction circumcision, courtesy of the Jews. <laughs> no, no, you can't be sick. No. <laughs> oh, you thought they were making up? No, no, no. They do that shit. <laughs> And Eric just told us that he was in charge of it. How old were the boys, Eric? Oh, anywhere between 16 and 25. <laughs> Imagine some, some nasty-ass old Jewish guy giving you herpes by giving you oral suction. It has been documented that the practice poses a serious risk of spreading herpes to the infant. <laughs> What's a little herpes amongst Jews? Kaizo, did you get herpes from this? No, we didn't use that. We I went to a hospital to get mine done. Mm-hmm. They chopped mine off yeah. at the hospital, apparently, too. That's what the Jews want you to say. <laughs> I remember when I was in junior high, that was the first time I saw an uncircumcised <laughs> penis in gym yeah. class. And I didn't know what was wrong with the person. I was like, why is his penis Wait, like a triangle? You I... Eric, you went to Jew High? No, I went to regular public school. I went to, in middle school, though, it was the first time I'd ever seen, I had to take gym, and, and back in the day, in the fucking dark ages, they forced everybody in gym class to, like, get undressed, get in the shower, and they stood there and watched you take showers naked to make sure you didn't, you cleaned yourself properly. It was ridiculous, you know? They never let that shit fly. They wanted to watch They never let that shit fly nowadays, but the shit they let fly back in the day was crazy. Anyway, in gym class in middle school, that's when I first saw somebody with an uncircumcised penis, and I didn't, I just thought there's something wrong with Chinese people. There was a Chinese kid, and there weren't very many of them yet. I thought, God, Chinese Dude, people have like, weird penises. Eric, I can't believe this. I have the exact opposite experience. I remember going to gym class, and well, not gym class, I remember going to the bathroom one day and thinking, what the fuck is wrong with him? Like some 40-year-old guy who's got like a mushroom for, for a penis. Mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> What was it, Eric? <laughs> it was Eric. 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's not a foreskin. I just literally have a mushroom for a penis. It's well, Eric. There's a, there's a simple explanation for what you saw there, and that is that the Jew fears the samurai. Mm, well said, well said, sir. Uh, but I would suggest that actually the opposite is more true. The samurai is really the one who fears the Jew. Why? Because he owns the economy. Because the Jews will cut off the tip of his penis. <laughs> Using his own sword. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a trick the Jews, all Jews have. They can disarm a samurai and use it to their, the, the samurai's own sword to cut off the tip of their penis. It's one of their magic powers. I was Jew for a while, so I know. Oh, it's Tuesday uh, yesterday. Well, it's Tuesday today. Tuesday today. Wow, you guys, it's Tuesday today. Huh? Yeah. Best Tuesday ever. You know the Shroud of Turin? That was me that they put the Shroud on. I didn't, I didn't want to tell them when they found it it wasn't Jesus, but when I was a Jew, they put that on me, and that's where that came from. Little known facts. Uh, <laughs> you know, like I said, I don't associate with any people in this group. You don't associate with any of them? Not even the guy who had the Shroud of Turin put on his face? That's me. Okay, if you like the Shroud of Turin, that means you like me. I like non-racist people. Nice, colorful people. I'm not racist. I'm not racist at all. We're talking about your racism, Kaizo, not his. Look, cis racial people are racist because they're cis racials. But transracial people like me, we can't be racist. We're immune to it. I can't be racist to Jews because I am partially a Jew, so. Why can't you be Jewish if you're partially Jewish? You have to be all Jewish to get the exemption. See, I, I've been yeah. all races and all religions 100% and sometimes more than one 100% at the same time. Technically, only if, is, I don't think there's anyone who's tech fully Jewish. I am. I have mates. been. I've been. I've been 200% Jewish before. That's really oh. fucking Jewish. That's both your mom and your dad, and the people your mom and dad would have slept with had they not gotten together. <laughs> Are all Jews? That's like some. That's some. Wow. It's, it's yeah. pretty Jewy. I had nothing but matzo ball soup, and I had one of those little brown hats on top of my head. It was crazy. It was always like, Ahoya, Mahoya. You also suck like a, that. Did you suck a lot of baby penis? No, I never actually got to do the brisk, as they call it. Um, I did get to break the plates in one of their Jewish ceremonies. Uh, I lifted up a chair above my head, and we, we danced around in a circle. It was spectacular. Wow. Then I, tra- then I switched over. I became Muslim for a while. That was a little less satisfying. But I did die while Muslim, and I did get to fuck a bunch of virgins, and that was cool. Then I decided to switch religions and I came back to life. You get kicked out of Islamic heaven if you if you decide to switch religions. You know, they never told us, is it male virgins or female virgins that you get? No, I got both. I got both of them. In fact, I didn't Sorry? I didn't actually do the fucking myself. I just had the male virgins fuck the female virgins. They're very obedient. Oh, wow. So uh, they were all pretty uh, happy okay. at the end of that. Thirty-six of each, yeah. So seventy-two. Wait, thirty-six of each of what? Virgins, so males, circumcised males penises. and females. Gender. No. Yeah. Of course, the male virgins. Okay, the that's male cool. virgins though. They're all like forty-five years old. They're fat. They have neck beards. <laughs> it's, it's not really. Very, they have neck beards. It's not very satisfying, to be honest. What about the females? So they're like, oh, like, what age are they? I mean, to be virgins, they got, they got to be like 14. Okay, that's, uh... Designer genders. Oh, well, yeah, they're, they're the whole thing. <laughs> <brain. laughs> what, what exactly would be yeah. a designer gender? Well, there's Zers and Zs and... And it's... <laughs> and... Has anyone here got a picture of Mark's wife? I want to see her. Uh, okay, I'll take a picture. Um... Yeah, you get a lot of hermaphrodites mixed in with the virgins sometimes. You gotta take them back, they'll exchange them. I don't know, they don't check them very carefully. Exchange them? Yeah, if you get Hermes, <laughs> if you get hermaphrodites, they'll exchange them for uh, single sex uh, virgins. 
Well, yeah, I guess I guess it is. They, they make them on mass, is what they do. It's a, they have a an industrial zone up in Islamic heaven where they produce these virgins. They're they're basically all have the same personality, male or female. They're all kind of like dumb bimbo. Oh, like that. So uh, you get tired of them pretty quick. Wow. Uh. They, they speak they, Arabic they, or English. Well, they speak. They speak what they program to speak whatever language you speak. The thing is, they break pretty easily. So, and when they do, it's kind of disgusting because they they evacuate their bodies from all the liquids, like all their poop pee and also their blood and their guts and all that kind of stuff just come gushing out of them. And you can break them just by like if you say the wrong thing, like because if they if they have one of those can't compute moments, then they explode. They, or they evacuate. It's a stinky place, Islamic heaven. It's not very sanitary. There's biohazards literally everywhere. It's a little known fact about it. They don't tell you that in the Quran. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now um, I got my joke. All right. Disclaimer, this guy, I, Kaiser, I do not agree with any of the viewings expressed here today. Oh, I'm a very do good you hate nice Islam? Guy. Do you hate Islam or something? I'm telling you about Islamic heaven and what happens there. I've been there. <laughs> okay? I, I was God, a, not only are Islam. you racist and pedophile, but you're also... I, I'm not a pedophile. I religious. reject that label entirely. <laughs> Kaizo? <laughs> I, I mean, you used to be a Jewish rabbi, so... Okay, just because just I spent my career in the Catholic priesthood doesn't make me a pedophile, Okay. No, I didn't really spend my years at Catholic priest. If I had, then I could understand you being suspicious. <laughs> I thought there were like 90 kids in I'm still suspicious of Kaiser. What the fuck is up with Catholic? Eric, Eric is... <laughs> Eric is beyond suspicion. He is He's very much not racist. Yeah, except for Eskimos. I hate no, I mean, Catholics Eskimos. are pretty bad. I don't like Catholics. Except for Eskimos. <laughs> Wait, you know, Catholics are pretty bad. And so are Muslims, to be honest. Yeah, well, listen, you got to remember something. It's okay when Muslims, you know, kill people and stuff because it's part of their culture and all cultures are equal. It's part of their culture to rape people, okay? I mean, that's what Sos was saying. All cultures are, um, who would, you can't judge one over the Who was saying that? Sos yesterday. Well, that's because he has polar TI. I don't know. He thinks that, you know, uh, you can't make any meaningful distinctions between cultures. Even consent is meaningless distinction. So. Well, then that's why we have horrible things in life in the world because people like Sauce think their earnest feelings matter more than thought. But you know, all we can do is shame, shame with with verve, and hope he realizes the error of his ways. Because er I have earnest feelings too. That, that shit won't fly. I think he thought a child rapist is just the same as as us sometimes when we do like I don't know. It just basically child rapist is not that bad thing for him. Well, he, he would be the same as us if he hadn't been a child rapist. Yeah, but he is. So he's not the same as us. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's like he would be the same if he wasn't a child rapist. Well, I mean, the thing is, obviously, individuals who transgress are bad for transgressing. But it's also true that the culture as a whole is bad because it has a tolerance for transgression, be that oppression of women or be that uh, relegation of free expression <laughs> below uh, respect for the sacred, which is a well, unacceptable. Both of those things are unacceptable, you know? They, they just don't believe well, in yeah. rights. It, it's not a rights-based culture at yeah. all. And so as a consequence, they're fucking. it's a foul and offensive culture that is anathema to all that is good and decent in the world. Like I'm, I'm all for bringing your bring bring your culture with you if you come to to, to America. But follow the laws that are in place. You know, it's like if if the law says no to to something in your culture, you can't fucking do it. Okay, well, I'm all for immigration in general as a good thing, mostly from most places. I'm just not for Islamic immigration because they represent direct something that is directly hostile to a civil society as a cultural norm. No, it's not. Misogyny? And institutionalized misogyny to the extent that it exists in Muslim culture such that a woman cannot walk through a political protest in Tahrir Square without getting gang raped is a problem. 
Muslims do well, not Well, you're talking women, about... Period. Yeah, well, you're talking about the oppression of women. I am. But that's... There, there's more to the Quran than just the well, I know, of but that's enough. To, that's a, that's enough poison in that apple for me not to want to eat it. John, you're right. There's also oppression of LGBT community as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the rape of children and the rape of children. Don't forget yeah. that one. Don't forget that. Yeah, but that you know, there's still there's plenty of bad things in in. Oh no no no! But we can't judge that. No no no! We can't judge that. No no. Hey, oh, I oh, hey, judge them all the no, way. But, I, but you know, it, it's, what I'm saying is that's the cultural norm for Islam, and there's no equivalent in some other culture. There, are, there are the cultures that I don't approve of certain aspects of them, such as I think Chinese culture with its weird obsession with fe and and lack of interest in in ti in lots of contexts is also offensive. However, it's very much. Uh, live and let live, li leave everybody else alone. That's deeply entrenched in Chinese culture too. They're great neighbors. They never bother you. They never complain about anything. And they never they never interact with you at all. They just stay out of your way entirely. So that yeah, that's, that's fine. Horrible. But they don't they don't try to impose on me communism, for example. They don't go like, if you're not communist, you should die. Sure. John, you gotta accept it, man. Some cultures are inferior. Yep. It's just, it's just true. Yeah, like European culture. Well, forget about the entirety inferior or superior, though. Inferior. You know, forget about inferior and superior. It's just which culture is acceptable, has an acceptable level of, <clears throat> an acceptable culture to add to our own that's not going to cause direct conflict with our culture or, or undermine it in some way directly. If, if you're Mexican, you might be more likely to to get drunk and watch soccer and, and have a lot of kids and go to the swap meet, but you're not more likely to hate every other person for no reason. Like Islam, is Muslims are because they think that women need to put more clothes on and stay in the house. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, the, the trouble I'm having, though, is that you are applying culture of Muslims in Arab countries to... Muslims that have migrated to say like America and have integrated into our culture without a problem. Okay, well, like but, they're, they're they're completely different things. Okay, so you're saying that, that the solvency of being immersed in this culture will be satisfactory to ensure integration. Just because some Muslims integrate successfully doesn't make it an acceptable risk. Most, level. because most I, Muslims I don't know if that's true. Successfully. I don't know if that's true. Listen. What we do know, really? uh, I, if you ask a Muslim in America, is it okay for me to um, mock Muslim, mock, mock Islam, and draw pictures of the Prophet and all that kind of stuff? They will say no. They'll, kill you. they'll, say, they'll, they'll disagree shoot. with that. They'll, they'll say that you don't have the free. Oh my God! Some people would shoot you. Okay. It's, it's the same thing as, as if you were to walk up to a Catholic person and say, "Is it okay for me to deface Jesus?" Well, I, I would say, sh okay. Let me rephrase the question: Should it be illegal for me to deface the Quran? They say yes, whether they live in America or not, and that is contra. And, and, and so would a Catholic person for a Bible? No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't say it should be illegal to face the Bible. <laughs> what makes you think there's a difference there? There's not, except in the in the respective. Cultures. Oh, I know, I, I know that, Jane. Yes, there there have been extreme extreme issues with with immigration in in England so far. For, also, for John, months. you're conflating. But that is one one big instance out of well and Sweden yeah uh, and <laughs> we've already given you pretty good reasons that's why that's one that big instance out of the entire and, history and, and France as well. whole history of, of Muslims what about Sweden uh, migrating there's all kinds of instances places. right now and we've already given you plenty of reasons why Islamic culture is distinctly bad uniquely bad compared to any other culture it's not like a matter of degree it's not a it's not a quantitative issue it's a qualitative issue it's distinct amongst all yeah, cultures that, for its wrongness and badness and thus we ought to single it out for not allowed in this and these these are all people that are not necessarily migrating through norm standards either they're refugees they're people who have who have fled their country okay, well, which which of right, course they, they, they haven't been properly vetted in the first place no 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 this is part of the eu this is part of the 600,000 that England had to accept as part of their deal with the EU. These aren't immigrants fleeing like that. 
Look, these are the these. Where where do you think this all started from? It's from the people wait, fleeing wait, from. Wait, wait, they're bringing the culture that they're fleeing from, though. They're. Fleeing. I know, and that's a problem. I accept that. That's okay. a problem. Okay, but listen. Well, I'm, also, I'm, I'm saying my advocacy has a test that lets reasonable Muslims get in. So if you're sort of ethnically Muslim but not religious at all, you'll have no problem passing this test. All you got to do is piss on the Quran and draw a picture of Muhammad with a shirt that says, "I approve on my face." <laughs> oh my God! And you don't, and you don't think, think that's extreme? extreme? No. Like, like ask that for any Catholic person. Okay. Sure, we can, but we don't need to implement it for Catholics because they don't mistake the sacred and the secular. They don't think that the sac that that being blasphemous deserves violence. But Muslims do. The entire country of Egypt protested to have a filmmaker who made fun of the prophet deported from America to Egypt so he could be put to death. Eighty percent of the population showed up at these, uh, not showed up at protests, but eighty percent of the population supported this notion. This is the average. Egyptian person we're talking about. It's not some extremist subpopulation. It's every fucking one of them. Right. No, I accept, no, I accept that. that. You know, like Islam, Islam culture, culture tends, tends to be more, more extreme than than Western culture. And yeah, I mean, there is a problem with that. I think that the the current state of pretty much all of Europe right now is like on fire because of it. But it doesn't necessarily mean that all these people th who have migrated throughout history are bad people. Of course not. Not all of them. I'm not saying that. I'm saying the the sovereign. You're, you're saying you're you're, you're, you're applying this bad situation, bad situation to all the, the of sovereign Muslims. nation has a responsibility to its own citizens first. It's not a moral agent. It's, it's still an agent that does things though. And so the responsibility is to represent the interests of the citizens. Now that should include, the interests of the citizens should include basic respect for human rights and stuff, so it's not it's merely yeah, utilitarian. Yeah. But the point is, it's not in the interest of any nation to let in a bunch of Islamic immigrants. It's not already an Islamic nation. That's true. That's true. I, don't I don't think that, 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 that shit should have flown, flown, like, at all. But, but you, know, it, you know, it did. We have to deal with it. But, you know, I, 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 I think... We're going, We're going a little, a little too, extreme too extreme on applying it's not extreme the, the paintbrush to, no, to the whole fucking in. board. To say, no, you people who keep causing problems can't come in. Sorry, the end. That's not too extreme. That's reasonable. We're not saying let's go no, hunt them no, down and kill them. No, I, I think that's, that's a very, a very true case. case. Nobody's advocating but, uh, to go hunt them down and kill them. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, like, I think the, the, the people, people, I mean, realistically, realistically speaking, you can't hunt down every single person who's done wrong and, you know, it's going to take time. But um, they shouldn't, they shouldn't have, have let the people in, in, in that many people in the first place without especially vetting them and, and uh, you know, allowing them to appropriate our culture before actually coming in. But it was a bad situation. What would you have them do instead? Say, no, you can't come in. What would you have had them? Nothing. And, 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 just, and just watch them die? them die? Give them guns. Star? If they're gonna if they're gonna get shot at, give them well, guns to shoot we, back. We did that in the first place. No, hey, no, but that's fine. Here's with the problem. We need to build. We need to have very strong borders. Give them no guns and boats. Give them all a bunch of guns and let them kill themselves to democracy. And after, and after they're, they're done killing each other, who do you think they're gonna aim it at? The four or five of them that are left can aim it at whoever the fuck they want. <laughs> and the four or five of them that, that caused 9/11. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's the best solution. Whatever. It's not a perfect solution, but it's the best solution available. That was our, that was our solution up until recently, recently was to, yeah, yeah isn't, that isn't that what we did in Syria? Syria? We, we just gave them guns. Yes. Don't give them any planes. Exactly don't we... give any planes or any boats, though. <laughs> I know. I think you guys are too scared of me. I, I, I know some great Muslim people. But no, I agree that the refugees, they should have just... Uh, yeah, yeah, basically you do let them die because it's the smartest thing to do. The other part of my advocacy is for those Muslims already living here, and this would be applied applicable to other countries as well, I suppose, but my advocacy is for the U.S., is that we treat them equally and without any sort of uh, mistreatment or suspicion or anything. Because once they're in, they're in. And now they get protected by the Constitution and stuff. When they're not in yet, it, it's our prerogative, and in fact I say our duty as a government, to say no, you can't come in. But once they're in, Absolutely. they should not be treated any differently than anybody else, and nobody should persecute them, and nothing like that. I think, I think Spacey had the right answer. answer. You should have just, just let him starve. Well, I mean, you, know, wow. you should have armed them. If they're, if they're really refugees fleeing fighting, you should have armed them and sent them back into the fighting. Let them fix their own problems until they become a stable country. If they want to say, here, um, we want to drop off our kid under the age of two 
and, and turn him over to you guys as we're not, we don't want to take care of him anymore because we're afraid he's getting killed. Fine, we'll take the kid, raise him as a non-Muslim. I mean, most, I mean, most Muslims are good, though. Um, most Okay, but that that's doesn't what matter. I, that's what I was saying. Most Muslims that have migrated in the past have been. That yes, doesn't this, matter. This whole this whole mass migration has been a very set on fire type that thing. That doesn't matter because it would matter if I were advocating the ones who are already here should be treated differently. But I'm not advocating that. I'm advocating that the ones who are seeking admission, we have no obligation to give admission to anybody. You say that now. But, but in the, in the past, past, like, you know, 30, 30 minutes, you've been painting, painting the brush of all Muslims are, are, are bad. I'm talking about Muslims seeking immigration as an immigration issue. I, I don't think that it's necessarily good for a society to have Muslims within it, embedded within it, in a, in a non in a secular society like the United States. However, I think it's worse for us to do anything about that than it is to have that. Yeah. Now, I also think it's worse for us to let more in than it is for us not to. We have no obligation to let them in. There's no positive obligation to help refugees. There is a negative obligation not to, to transgress upon those already here. That's why we don't let them in in the first place. What about, what about the, the good? good? The principle of the good, you know? That's to be determined by negative applications of rights, not positive, certainly at the state level. Individuals might choose to exactly. engage in altruism, but the state can't be that bold. So, so do you think, you think we should allow less Muslims to, 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 to integrate in our culture? Zero. Or? Zero. Wait, so you unless, you they pass my test, unless they pass my test, then they can come in. Hmm. But, why but why is it your test? test? So, so, so your really, test. you so so, so all test. Muslims should piss, piss on a Quran. Piss on the Quran, drop <laughs> I mean, a picture right. of Muhammad, and make fun of him. Talk about how um, how a woman embarrassed you one time and have an honest laugh about it <laughs> instead of and and, murder and, and rage. And, and, so that, so that should apply to Muslims, Muslims that are living peaceful. here peacefully. Then no, because you you just ignored everything. But well, you just said that all. You just said that all Muslims should piss on the Quran. I made the distinction between a negative rights transgression against those who are already here and already protected, and the stipulation for entry are different because we have no positive obligation to allow people entry, I, I but we do have an obligation, a, a negative obligation, not so to trample people's all, rights when they're here. All future immigrating, immigrating Muslims, Muslims, then, not, not just, not, not, not the current Muslims, Muslims that are in our country. Correct. I, I've made, I thought I was pretty clear about that. I definitely don't want them to be mistreated, persecuted at all, treated any well, differently. Well, what I was, what I was, what I was saying, saying was all Muslims in general, whether or not, whether or not they should have to piss on a Quran. No. And you said, yeah, that's what I was No. I mean, the ones, the ones immigrating, but not, not okay. they're not okay. immigrating. Well, why do you, well, why do you think they should have to piss on the Quran? To prove that they understand that the secular right to expression super being, uh, trumps or over otherwise you know, outweighs the positive expectation of respect for your version of the sacred. Is that freedom of religion in this country? So, so, so essentially separation of church and state. Well, I want an acknowledgement of the distinction between the metaphysical and the physical. That if there's a metaphysical <laughs> crime, you respond with a metaphysical answer. If you don't like us making fun of your god, then you make fun of ours. But, but they can't understand that. that. Just, just like the only some of them would do that. Okay, well then that's, that's the whole point. Is it's supposed to. It's I don't think he's out literally meaning piss on the Quran. I, I think he means de denounce the, the religion altogether. No, I don't. No, I think. No, I, think really I mean, to demonstrate you, you have an ability to distinguish between symbols and reality. That the yeah, symbolic. Yeah, yeah. The symbolic assault on your culture is not the same as an actual physical attack on somebody. I gotta go to the bathroom. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, there's too many, there's too many. What, what are your views, Kim, if you don't mind me asking? Um, <clears throat> my views are, I, I, you know, I think it's kind of a silly thing that Eric's talking about, so it almost seems like it, he's not serious about it, but I think he is. But, um, I don't know, I just think that... Um, you know, it's kind of like, as a general rule, I believe that as a human being, we are by nature inclined to take care of our our own families first, and then we will worry about somebody else's family. We don't usually tend to be able to, I mean, like, I just think we need to help ourselves first, and then we can help other people. But right now, we have so many of our own problems that I think we just need to stay out of it. Well, are they, well, are they sufficiently, sufficiently big enough, enough problems not to be able to help people, people who are having, having bigger, bigger problems, than problems than we are? Well, I don't necessarily know that they're having bigger problems than we are. Well, well, dying. Starving, Starving, dying, dying warfare, warfare that's, that's, those, those are pretty, pretty big problems. problems. We, so problems. we don't we have, have those things in our state. Too. We're, in We're in active war with ourselves? No, I'm saying there's veterans out there who are starving and dying and nobody's 
taking care of, uh, of our that. people here. I'd say, I'd we, say have we have it pretty well, pretty, pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. You know, I like do, it's... but I live next to a town I, I, where I, I see people fairly, fairly starving and dying on the street every day. You can go to Los Angeles, it's the same thing. You, you hear about it all, these, all, all the time about families um, losing their homes. Why, are, why is there no help for our people here? That's a good, That's question. A good question. I wonder, I wonder if, if, if people, people are, are asking, asking for help. help. You know, whether, you know whether, whether, whether 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 they're too proud, too proud to ask for it or, or unable, unable to get help due to something like addiction or something like that. Because I know because I know, I know if I was still, still actively like addicted, addicted to something, I would, I would uh, probably, probably be unable, unable to get help from the government. When you have children, you you have an obligation and. Yeah. When you yeah. have children, they're in school. There's an obligation to make sure that they have food in their bellies and and clothing on their back, and then I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I, said, I said no. Don't worry. I was just annoying. I said on their bellies or inside it. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> food in their bellies. So I just think we have enough of our own problems that people ignore. Okay. 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 And, and you join? Yeah. Guessing, I mean, I, I, I can. I can, I can see what you're saying. What you're saying. I, th I think that, that our, problems our problems are overblown, overblown because, because, you know, like, I've been, been in a big city and I've been in a small city so far. And no, I, no, I, the 9-11 was like, overblown. What's up? What's up? The 9-11 was overblown. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. Um, uh, you know, I can't say that I've seen all of what the United States are like, but... Uh, I'd say, you know, it's better than being in active warfare. But they're in active warfare because of their own choices. Everybody's, Everybody's choice? choice? Everybody, Everybody had, had a choice in that? Um, because because we, what, what I'm saying is, is you know, we have free elections. elections. We have the, the free, free opportunity, opportunity to express, to express our, our opinions, or, whether, 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 whether we want to or not. Do you, do you know that if you go and Google pictures of Iran back in the 1970s, you'll see women in miniskirts driving cars? Yeah. 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 That, that, that culture made those decisions for them. Yeah. That culture, did. they embraced, yeah. made those decisions. It did, absolutely. Uh, and, 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 you know, they're, you know, they're paying the price for it now. But, but does, that does that necessarily detract from the, the, the depravity that's going on? No. no. But like, but like she said, said there's there's there is depravity. I'm sorry. I'm glad that you haven't seen it. But, but I'm, 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 I'm playing the like, I'm, I'm all for what you guys are saying. I'm just, you know, it's, it's to spark conversation. But, but here's the thing. You know how, like, in a plane, they tell you that before you put your mask on your kids, you're supposed to put your own on? We need to put a mask on first. Kim is right. Right. Well, that... The, the 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 argument I'm making is, I mean, I mean, aren't, aren't our masks, masks pretty much already on? No, no, John, they're not. They're not. Go, Go volunteer. volunteer. Get out of your. You've your, been here volunteer. all the time. You're, you're in here all the time, John. And if you're going to sit here and tell well, me that I've been in here all day, but you know, I do volunteer. I can I finish any of my sentences. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jane. I'll put my pants back on. <laughs> I think, I think that you were raised as an indoor cat, and I think, and I think that that, that is really, really nice for you, that if you took you went, outside went outside and looked around at those less fortunate, that we do have enough in this country, country to deal with. Are we are very lucky? lucky? Yes. Should we, Should we help others if we, if we have that opportunity? opportunity. Yeah. Are we obligated to do so? I don't think so. Help us. I agree with you. You know, I, you know, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that necessarily, necessarily we should be obligated, obligated to help anybody, to but, uh, you know, I've, I've lived rough. I've lived, I've lived very rough. rough. I've, lived I've lived through, through very traumatic, traumatic experiences, experiences as well. You know, I've, you know, I've, I've been homeless. homeless. I've been, I've been having, having to shit well, on I the streets. We've all, I think we've all had it really, really rough. And the thing is, is maybe not in comparison to, to um, people in Iran, but the thing is, is for the standard of living that my country um, wanted to provide for me, I have lived rough. And I've been in a situation where I didn't get medical care, even though I paid taxes at one point. Yeah. I was, you know, 19 years old, and nobody could help me. Nobody wanted to help me medically because I did not have insurance. And I sat in a county USC hospital for 14 hours waiting for a cast. And that's because I was not... Um, an illegal person or because I was not pregnant. It just, I don't know. So 
so I have yeah, a hard time. Uh, I don't think that you should have waited that long for that I have a hard time either, looking but... outside of our own problems and really giving a rat's ass. Sure. sure. My, myself, I, I've when I've broken my bones, I was taken to the emergency room. So I, you know, I probably waited about a day in and out of a coma. Um, but uh, I don't know. I think it's 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 nice to you know be able to have free health care. For example, I mean, I, I don't think it works very well. But yeah, now at, at least at the moment we have free health care, and we're not necessarily on fire. But you know, we we do. We are, we are less comfortable, comfortable right, right now, now than we may, may have been 20, 20 years ago. ago. I'm more comfortable because I have free health care. I don't um, have any health care. What I mean as a society, less comfortable. You know, back back with the ele electronics bubble. You know, like, you know, yeah, even no, the baby boomers. As soon as I turned 19, you know, I was self-employed as a hairdresser, and insurance is not provided for me. My mother also did right. not provide a home for me, neither did my father. So here I am, hairdresser with no place to live, no insurance, and uh, I, I break a bone in a car accident, and um, nobody's there to help me. Which bone did you break? My ankle. Mm -hmm. Was it a cast in a wheel? Hey, nice burn. That's fair? Well, I wouldn't say that's necessarily fair either, you know? Um, my, I can just compare it to the way my life was. You know, when I went to the hospital, I was probably... They had my bones separated using uh, gallon jugs of water, um, and I waited about a day before they had a surgeon come by and put rods in my legs. And I don't think that's necessarily fair either. Well, um, all I'm saying is, and I, I live in eternal pain because of it. That's something that's very minor, but um, what I'm trying to say is, is that it shouldn't even have ever gotten to that point. <clears throat> It shouldn't even ever get to the point to where people that I live in the next town over are living on my sidewalks. It shouldn't get to that point. It shouldn't get to the point to where there are homeless people who have to go into an emergency room just to get away from the heat or need something to eat because our shelters are too crowded. Mm-hmm. Well, look, the thing is... The reason you were in that bind at 19 was because your family failed you. It's not because the state failed right, you. Right, but okay, my family failed me. But the thing is, is I was already paying taxes. Okay, but that doesn't As entirely... As a 16-year-old... Look, I'm all for you not paying anywhere close to the amount of taxes that you pay. I don't feel like I should have been denied. Well, I agree that you shouldn't pay anything close to that much in taxes, but if we are not entitled to free health care. And the thing Why is, are illegal aliens? Well, That's okay, my point. Well, they aren't either. They were back then. Okay, well, they're not now. So the thing is, well, I, I think we are we are talking about society today. All right. Well, look. I mean, we're we're trying to talk about society the, today. The point is, I was able to go get my hand fixed for a hundred dollars when I broke my hand at County USC as well. Kim and I had the same experience many years apart. I broke a bone and had to go to County USC too, and I had to wait sixteen hours. She had to wait fourteen hours. Um, but the thing is, it was a couple of days after I broke my hand anyway, so it was like, it wasn't, it wasn't an urgency. As long as your guts weren't spilling out, or you were, um, having a cardiac arrest, you would sat on a gurney with a number. But they did eventually cast my hand, and I did, uh, get my hand fixed, and it cost me a hundred bucks because of government subsidies. So I've taken advantage of government free shit as well. The thing is, if you, they do have some place you can go if if you are injured and you need to get fixed for cheap. The fact that people think it should be all free, I mean... I don't it, think it should be free, but they should have been able to find a way to make it available to me. Well, they can't deny you health care. Right. Nobody that, that, denied they, they can't. Um, yeah, and they, they, they take, take you on priority. So, so I mean, the, 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 the problem, if there's a problem, the, the problem, problem is that there's not enough, you know, doctors, doctors and surgeons. Not necessarily that there's too many people. I mean, the thing is, we need to have a second level of sort of doctors, like nurse practitioners, who actually function as doctors in the majority of cases. Because the amount of money that is wasted on so-called preventative care is astonishing. I haven't yeah. been to the doctor 
the only time I ever go to the doctor is when I have to get my Adderall refilled or when I broke my finger I went and it cost me 75 bucks and they really didn't do anything very useful except give me a better splint um, and I went when I you know that's, that's basically it I don't ever go to pretty the sure you can get a splint for your finger at like Rite Aid yeah like, I should have <laughs> I should have I thought well, I was, was hopeful that five bucks. I was worried because it was starting to, to curve in a weird way and so that's why I went to see her because I wanted to make sure I could still play the guitar and stuff. Anyway, it all worked uh, out fine. I should have just gone with my gut. Lesson to you children, do not stick your finger in your butt while you're driving. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, my, my views on healthcare are fundamentally, I think it's a little different because I think, I absolutely do think there should be free healthcare, but there should also be paid healthcare. You know, like if you pay, if you are willing to pay that premium, you can have faster service. Well, I mean, uh, I don't. Why don't you, it shouldn't? It shouldn't get you faster service through the same channel well, as people who aren't service, paying. Which would automatically yeah. be faster. Right. That that well, that would make more sense. All right. Well, let let me ask you guys. Let me ask. This is an interesting question. What if? we had a UBI. We had no other social programs. We had a UBI. Everyone got $21,000 a year with the, as a basic universal basic income with the, with the strong indication that you need to buy your health insurance with this. Now, if somebody still doesn't buy health insurance with that, do we still have to give them free health care? I think they shouldn't be turned away, but they should be charged for it. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so then we should do that, get rid of all the other social programs, replace it with a UBI and give everybody a free do-rag. So how do you prevent people from spending the $21,000 on anything other than healthcare related things? They can spend it on whatever they want. It's universal basic income. It's supposed to be for so red, they think that red health are a good way going to the doctor. They think what? And so if they think narcotics are a good way to prevent going to the doctor? Well, look, I mean, why don't we why don't we control how people make money they earn as well then? After all, they That's might spend point. it on drugs. The point is, it's their money once we give it to them. So they can do with it as whatever they want. It's the, it's the only thing that actually has positive economic benefits on, on our culture is direct transfers of wealth. Anything else, any kind of end kind benefit actually has negative impacts. So if we want to tax people and take money and redistribute it, fine. But then actually do that. Take a bunch of money from in taxes and then cut an equal size check to every American who's within the eligible age range. $21,000 per person in America. One no, billion people, not, that's $21 trillion. Not per person because it's only an eligible age range. 25 and over. 25 and over. So let's say, what, 750,000? I mean... What? Or 750 million? No, there's only 400 million saying, people in America right now. Yeah, there's not a billion people here. I thought, excuse me, my fault. So, um, 400 million, you probably figure maybe 300 million adults. I don't know how many kids there are, but uh, let's, let's say 300 million adults. 21,000. That's uh, six, six billion. billion. Okay. Now look, our current our current uh, federal budget is about seven billion, and we can cut out a lot of it to make room for this thing. But the real way to do the UBI is through my crypto USD uh, architectural tax and redistribution redistribution model, where we launch a crypto USD that has in the architecture a four percent tax that goes through Treasury fund that automatically redistributes it right out to take any controls away from the Congress. So it's like it comes back in taxes as soon as you make a transaction. As soon as it hits the Treasury thing, it go gets redistributed into these um, like funds in waiting for, in, in each person's name that then gets transferred every month. Okay. Well, twenty one trillion, twenty one dollars, twenty one thousand dollars for three hundred million people is six point three trillion. Okay. Yeah, six point three trillion. I said billion. I'm sorry, trillion. Yeah. Current, that's, that's a lot of money. The current federal budget is seven trillion. So, and now granted, much of that budget is not 
on domestic spending. It's not on social programs. But nevertheless, um, that's well. That's why I would fund it with a crypto USD. In which case, it wouldn't necessarily give you twenty one grand. It would give you whatever your cut of the total taxes collected from the crypto USD uh, architectural tax mechanism are. I think we could probably go with less than twenty one thousand dollars per person if if we do away with uh, taxes and unfair charges for procedures because they overcharge like a motherfucker. Well, I mean, so ideally it would be two grand a month. Like 10, ideally it would be ten, two grand a month. Two grand a month is a universal basic income as far as I'm concerned. That's 24000 But I don't think, to get it, get it, the numbers to work sort of, to get it under the existing budget where you can no. imagine, you know, you got to cut somewhere. So you, 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 sh you shave off the bottom end of the people, make the people support their own kids with their UBI. Um, and you make clear, there needs to be a constant sort of messaging program associated with it too, saying, this is, this is your, this, this means you have no more excuses. That's the message. You have no more excuses because this is enough to get by on if that's, if that's all you can do. Um, get a shitty little apartment and, and that's all you can do and that's all you can do. But you don't have so any what excuses happens to not at least inflation? get by. Huh? <clears throat> what? what happens with inflation then? If, if, everyone, if everyone gets more than what poverty level is, then everything will become more expensive. Um, I don't think so. I don't think it's going kind to of cause inflation because it's not. It doesn't print. It doesn't print wealth that doesn't exist. It's not like a printing prog program. Instead, it's uh, well, if the, the crypto USD plan, it's it's a transactional tax. So every time there's a transaction, it's a, there's a four percent tax that automatically goes back to the the crypto treasury. Now keep in mind that there's everyone can mine this cryptocurrency like any other cryptocurrency, so you can access it that way as well. But but um, the the amount of transactions using the cryptocurrency will continue to grow. So the UBI will continue to grow with the utility with the with the commonness of use of the of the currency. And if the United States government is backing it, then it can do things like afford it full legal tender status. Okay, so I mean, I see, I see potential for stimulating growth in the economy, but uh, it, it would just basically raise the poverty level, um, and then therefore Why? it's not you know, it's not pretend wealth. It's taking real wealth from people who actually earned it and redistributing it. Is that okay? Well, maybe not, but it's better than the existing. Sorry, way of socialistic. It's better than the existing way of redistribution. The existing way of redistribution harms the economy. It makes everybody poorer, not richer. Now, if you do a UBI, it actually will make the economy more vibrant, and the bottom will go up and the top will go down a little bit. So it'll narrow the income gap or the wealth gap. But you know, and, and the, most importantly, it, it bypasses the the negative aspects of in-kind benefits. It doesn't infantilize the recipient. In other words, they just get a check and they spend it however they want. It doesn't incentivize poverty. You don't have to be poor to get it. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't distort markets. Unlike if I give you, guys, if I give everybody free milk, then the milk people actually producing milk to sell it, they're hurt. You know, so it doesn't distort the market like that. It doesn't incur any bureaucratic waste because we don't have to go through some agency that distributes it based on need. And it uh, actually works. Unlike, um, unlike in kind benefits or any other poverty uh, approach, poverty reduction approach has been attempted. I'm pretty good at arguing it. Sorry, I, I'm reading something else. Well, thanks for watching Talk of the Finish, people. That was uh, 53 minutes of pure gold. <laughs>